motherfucking mini episode. Mini episode. Motherfucking mini episode. Yup, yup, yup. There it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another phenomenal episode of My Mama Told Me, the podcast where we dive deep deep into the pockets of black conspiracy theories and we finally work to prove the theories that you the listeners have at home bitch did i mention it's a mini episode i probably didn't but you know the game baby it's motherfucking thursday which means it's a motherfucking mini episode and it is just as many and just as i guess uh motherfucking as all of the other motherfucking mini episodes and i'm excited it's gonna be a good one because today's episode comes to us from a person representing the caucus region of this country that's right a caucasian person sent me a message that i thought was worth diving into and i'm excited to read you this message today it comes from a gentle per- a gentle person let's say gentle person that seems very pc in today's uh today's times you know to to say a gentle person we're we're not going to gender this individual but greg which has a, a gender tone to it but that's my antiquated brain kicking in you know that's me needing to grow past my own bullshit that said greg sent me something he started with just langston comma which feels like i'm about to get a stern talking to but greg said langston i love the My Mama Told Me podcast, and I have been thinking about this one ever since I started listening. I am white and grew up in a predominantly white area, so I'm having flashbacks of how racist things were around me as a kid. One thing that cycled around in my school was that the car company named Pontiac was actually an acronym for poor old N-word thinks it's a Cadillac. Now, I want to be clear that Greg did put N-word. He didn't write nigga. I don't know the rules around writing nigga for white people. I think if you're sending it as an email to a black man, you probably should just say N word. And Greg did exactly that. So good for you, Greg. Anyway, he says, obviously, this is pretty horrible, but I didn't know if it was a common thing or just for my just from my areas. Figured it would be a good mini episode topic. Thanks, Greg. Okay, so. Greg, first of all, thank you for sending me this. I had never heard of this before in my life. I think whatever racist shithole you come from, Greg, this is special to y'all because this wasn't something kicking around in my Chicago suburb. That said, I, I was very excited to read it. Not not because I was excited that people behave this way, but more because It did seem like a fun thing to dig into, and I did exactly that, Greg. I dug in. I did my research. I spent, I would argue, minutes figuring out real answers to your hypothetical of whether or not Pontiac, the the legitimate car company Pontiac, defunct in 2010, I might add, but the, the once legitimate car company Pontiac was in fact hiding a, an acronym, poor old nigga thinks it's a Cadillac. Now, as it turns out, Greg, to answer your question, Pontiac is not an acronym at all. That suggestion was not at all real. This wasn't a secret acronym. The Pontiac line of vehicles was actually named after a legendary Ottawa chief who bravely fought against the British nearly 250 years ago. He basically teamed up with American soldiers and he was most known, I guess, for like sort of like uniting the native nations at the time that like he was a dope speaker and a great leader. And he got a bunch of communities that otherwise wouldn't have participated in the fighting to join forces. Now, in the Wikipedia, and this is important, it also says that the namesake for the city of Pontiac, Michigan, comes from this guy. So Chief Pontiac, he was part of the naming of both the Pontiac vehicles and Pontiac, Michigan. Now, I said named, and this is important. It says in the Wikipedia that he gave his name to the city of Pontiac, which I find to be pretty unlikely. Do you know what I mean? It's just hard to imagine he was he was lying on his deathbed like I want to give my name. (coughs) I want to give my name to a city filled with (coughs) with with white people. 
filthy white people who will eventually claim that that my name is an acronym to antagonize poor black people none of us have ever met. <coughs> and then he died. You know, that's that's hard to believe that old Pontiac, that was his plan. But the ironic part is that Chief Pontiac decided to fight against the British because he is said to have realized that under British rule, his people would no longer be welcome in the forts and that they would ultimately be deprived of their hunting grounds by aggressive settlers encroaching upon their ancestral lands. Now, not like the Americans, who, as we all know, ended up being super cool to the Native Americans. And I have no notes for you, white people. You nailed it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. (laughs) This dude truly put his faith in the Americans thinking that the British were going to do wrong by them, which they probably would have. I don't want to confuse this. The British were probably going to be pieces of shit to the Native Americans, but unfortunately, so were the the fake Americans who had already sort of made plans to steal all of this land from the Ottawa people and all of the other Native tribes that surrounded the Great Lakes and everywhere else that they already lived in this country. Now, it's likely that the cause for this supposed acronym that you're talking about, Greg, and I'm sure you know this already, is that Pontiacs were sort of known for being a pseudo-luxury brand. They really wanted to be a lot fancier and more uh, classy than they ended up being received. They started out as this company attempting to make like luxury sedans. These were these were cool, sexy cars for the working man. And then out of nowhere, because it's not out of nowhere, because they more or less weren't uh, as welcomed as one would hope. They weren't sort of like matching the success of your Cadillacs, your Lincolns, your Buicks at the time. They started uh, attempting then to make muscle cars. And that's where they found their success. They made some some cool muscle cars. But then, you know, muscle cars sort of like uh, they that's not how you keep the business alive. You know, you kind of have to to be able to sell more cars and more functional vehicles. And by the time they ended, they dead it out in 2010. They had to declare bankruptcy in 2009, basically after the the financial crisis of 2008. The company GM uh, had to make some decisions and they were like, hey, you guys make bullshit, Pontiac. We're, we're going to kill you off. And so Pontiac running out of money had to kill themselves off. And it's a fair decision because by the time that they deaded out, they were making weird SUVs like something called the Pontiac Montana, which I had never heard of. But if you look it up, You'll see exactly why they didn't keep making that motherfucker. And then even worse, they made something which is objectively known as one of the worst vehicles of all time, which is the Pontiac Aztec. Now, I don't know how many of you remember the Pontiac Aztec, but I'll describe it for you now because I had to re- I had to look it up again just to remember why it disgusted me. But the Pontiac Aztec basically looks like if a turtle and a Tetris piece fucked and then had a real weird baby. You know what I mean? Just turtle beating them guts up in a Tetris piece. And then that Tetris piece gives birth. I don't know why the Tetris piece would be the one giving birth and not the turtle. It seems like the Tetris piece would be easier to insert in the turtle wherever turtle pussy is kept. But as it turns out, in my imagination, the turtle's the one fucking and the Tetris piece is the one making the baby. I'm real progressive in that way. I can see beyond your norms, your conforming norms. And I see something more beautiful, which is a Tetris piece with its bricks up on stirrups as as something real fucked up, like a Pontiac Aztec crawls out of its its hole. (laughs) Now, anyway, I'll keep going. I didn't have to get that graphic. Apparently, these acronyms are largely regional and do seem to correlate with the things that people personally hate. So like your community, Greg, uh, you hate black people and not you personally. Obviously, you don't. You you like at least one black person. And that's all we ask. You know, that's all I ask of of any white person, like at least one, you know, (laughs) why go to two or three? Just find one you dig and uh, write them letters. Anyway, 
The acronyms are not limited to just hating black people. I actually found a website that had a list of potential acronyms that for some reason are rated on the side. People had the chance to rate some of these acronyms and some of them are pretty uh, fucked up just equally fucked up to that uh, the one from before. So there's things like puts out, Pontiac stands for puts out noxious toxins in all cities, which I don't know what that means. Pontiac, people on narcotics think it's a Chevy. That one's funny to me. I enjoyed that one. Pontiac, poor old nut thinks it's a Cadillac. Now we know nut in this situation, depending on who you're talking to, could be something else. There's poor old Norwegian thinks it's a Cadillac. Poor old Nutter thinks it's a Cadillac. Poor old N thinks it's a Cadillac. Now, we know what that N stands for, don't we, people? People of classy, normal thinking, intelligence, acting classy. Uh, That, you know, eh, it's, it's a little... It feels wordy. It feels like you're working too hard on that one. Pontiac, pull over now. The injectors are cooked. Here's here's a one that I enjoyed. Pontiac Peckerwoods of NASCAR thinks it's a Chevy. Now, I love hearing a white person get called a Peckerwood. That's fun for me. So that was my favorite. If I have the option to rate it, I'm giving it a five stars, baby. That's a great one. Poor old New Yorker thinks it's a Cadillac. Pontiac only never think install a Chevy. People of native tribes inside a casino. That one's super racist because it's actually a native name. Paid overnight to inject air coolant. Poor old Neo Height thinks it's a Cadillac. I'm sure that's a racist word that I'm less familiar with. With, with worth? Who can talk nowadays? Who has the time to talk well? You know, that's what I always say. Pontiac parents of Nabilene, Nab Nabilone. Take it and crash. God damn, that's probably some racist shit about black people. Pontiac pathetic old tractor traded as a Corolla and then poor oldies not trash. It's awesome. Come on. People worked really hard to hide those acronyms, which in all likelihood were just long form ways of being mad at black people. Now, getting back to some of these acronyms, it did make me excited that Cadillac and these other companies were treated with such uh they were revered in such positive ways. And so I got to thinking, wouldn't it be fun if there were other acronyms that, that were sort of floating around in Greg's neighborhood? You know, like what, what if there were other acronyms for some of these other cars that are just mad at black people like Cadillac? What if Cadillac meant uh, coon ass darky is licking lips at chicken? You know, <laughs> coon ass darky is licking lips at chicken. That that's a fun one. Or Lincoln means listen in, niggas, cause O'Fay loves nooses. That's <laughs> I had so much fun writing these. Buick means uh bitch, you is coochie king. That one is that one's not racist, but it means the most to me. That was my favorite. And I will be submitting it to the fine folks at Buick if they're still in business. I truly have no idea if Buick's still in business. They also make pretty shitty cars. Anyway, if you or or your friends would like to send me racist acronyms from your childhood, then then please send them to mymamapod at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. And and as always, subscribe to the podcast. Review the podcast. Write me letters where you complain about my nonsense. Truly, it all means the world to me, and I love to hear from you. And if you don't do it, I'll murder your entire family. How about that? If if you don't, <laughs> if you don't write a review, I, I look, I threatened to beat your knees before, and it clearly didn't work for some of you. So now I'm just gonna go straight at it. I'll murder your entire family. I'm not even sure if I'm legally allowed to say that on a podcast. We may have to edit it out. But if we don't have to edit it out, just know I'll kill everyone you love. Okay, I'll miss you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, bitch. Motherfucking mini episode. Mini episode. Motherfucking mini episode. Motherfucking mini episode. Mini episode. Motherfucking mini episode.